pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. Interview with Gordon Matthews. On Thursday, both sides in Hong Kong's ongoing pro-democracy protests attempted to raise the stakes, with student groups threatening to occupy government buildings by midnight Thursday if Chief Executive C.Y. Lung doesn't step down, and the government promising not to tolerate any so-called illegal acts by protesters. Meanwhile, protester attendance remained high on Thursday, which was a public holiday, and our correspondent ran into Gordon Matthews, professor of anthropology at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. His published works include Ghetto at the Center of the World and Hong Kong, China, Learning to Belong to a Nation. He shared his views on the pro-democracy protest in Hong Kong. I decided to be quite supportive because I completely agree with my students that basically Beijing did betray Hong Kong. Uh, I went to the Tamar, the, the Tamar uh, Park on Sunday when the, the police were blocking everything off and we had to fend off all the tear gas there. That was the real center of the protest and that's where I was glad to be there because I could help. Now I'm just a tourist. I'm walking through here and I'm delighted to see so many of my students and so on here uh, talking to them, but I'm too old to sleep outside the way they're doing, so I am going home at night. Still, this is a wonderful thing to see. The big question that we have is how all of this is going to turn out. And that scares me a little bit, but so far I'm optimistic. I wonder, it's wonderful to see how my students and other young Hong Kong people are behaving in such an exemplary way, the finest ideals of uh, civic society. Mm -hmm. Is it a very different Hong Kong from the usual Hong Kong now? Um, not really, because I think, uh, I've also gone to the July 1st marches uh, very often, and I see a similar side of Hong Kong. There's always been this element in Hong Kong. Uh, probably for the last 15 or 20 years, Hong Kong has been shifting from a city based on money and consumption to a city based on political consciousness. We've seen that going on. It's also important to remember that this doesn't represent all of Hong Kong. I think probably a majority of Hong Kong people are more or less represented by this, but there are many people who, who this doesn't represent. That has to be kept in mind. Still. Um, yeah, this does represent Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So you do a lot of work uh, with Chongqing Mansion, and we know you read, uh, you wrote the book on it. So we have seen a lot of like uh, ethnic minorities coming to this protest. What do you think about that? Is it going to, um, I don't know, fostering like a solidarity between local Chinese Hong Kongers and other, I don't know, like uh, Southeast Asians or? It could, but probably not much, because one thing about all of these protests is they are in Cantonese. Mm -hmm. And some South Asians speak very good Cantonese. They can participate. Many more ethnic minorities in Hong Kong don't. And so this is a barrier. I think to truly get down, get rid of that barrier, we would need to have these bilingual settings. But Hong Kong is 94% Chinese, most of them Cantonese-speaking Chinese, so it makes perfect sense it would be the way it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's what we see. Many of the ethnic minorities I now work with most closely are asylum seekers. And many of them are afraid to come here because they are um, perceived as illegal anyway in some settings, and so they don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. However, I have encouraged them to come, and I hope at least sometimes they can walk around and see this example of citizenship, because this kind of democracy is not only Hong Kong, I think this is universal. And in Taiwan, you guys already did this a few weeks ago, as I recall. So, we're following your footsteps in one sense. Okay. Get the Tomo News mobile phone app, uncut and uncensored. Search for Tomo News in the Apple App Store or Google Play, or see the links in the description of this video.